Hello everyone, and welcome. Today we are going to be going over this robot mech explosion sound that I created, matching the animation for D.Va's Ultimate from Overwatch as a placeholder animation. Here's the sound that we're working with. So that's the sound that I remade, and we're just going to be going over this step by step. If you guys want to watch me recreate this sound in full, then you can check out the link in the description to watch me recreate this full robot mech explosion sound effect. So anyways, let's just jump right in. So we can break this down into a few different parts. We have the buildup, and then we have the explosion. And then we have this middle charge up area. So we're just gonna break this up piece by piece. We're gonna start with the build up. So for the build up, all that I did was I took a rain jacket and I put it up against a bicycle that was upside down and spun the pedals. And it created this really nice high frequency. And the faster that I spun the pedals, the higher pitch that it went. So if you'll listen here. So I just did that and lowered it in pitch, and then I also raised it in pitch on a separate layer and combined them together. And then what I did was I took that same exact sound effect, reversed it, and used that on the explosion actually. So as you hear, it goes downwards in pitch now. And another layer that I added with that was a synthesizer that I used Massive for. All I did was I just made sure that it rose in pitch just like the bicycle sound did. So if you listen, it just kind of adds a little bit more of a technological feel to it. So if we listen to all them together, it actually works really well. So the next part that I added was I added some electricity. This electricity was created with just paper tearing, and what I did was I went into a different DAW called Logic Pro 9, and I put it in a plugin called a Bit Crusher, which is basically just a distortion plugin. It made it a little bit more electronic to a certain degree because it made it more staticky, and I think it brought that point across really well. And that kind of just added another layer, and it kind of gave off the impression that the robot was malfunctioning. Anyways, the next sound that I added was I took a pistol and I just cocked it, take the, took the magazine in and out, fired the trigger without a, any bullets in it, obviously, and I actually just layered it on top of each other multiple times. You can see these three tracks here, and I actually just reversed them. So here's one of the sounds. So it creates a really cool, like, backwards imploding kind of sound. And then I duplicated that three times, or sorry, I, I layered three different sound effects over each other, and it actually created this really cool texture. And as you can hear, it actually, it, it works really well. So if we listen to all that together. So the next thing we're going to go over is the explosion. I already explained how I did this sound here, the bicycle. All I did was take this and, and reversed it so that it went downwards in pitch instead of upwards in pitch like before. And along with that, I did some more synthesizer work down here. Uh, that is not one of them. It's these three here. It, it get, it's a little bit different than the one that I did up here, this one synthesizer. And we'll, we'll listen to these one at a time. I don't really have much to say on these, but they, they just added, had their own purpose. One thing that these three do are they cover different frequencies in the frequency spectrum. For example, the last one that I just played was a lower sound, and then this one is a higher sound, and then this one is a little bit lower than the previous sound. So they kind of just fill each other out to a certain degree. And then I added some more electricity, and that just kind of accentuated the fact that it was breaking some more. The next thing that I did was I added some crumpling paper sound, as you'll hear. And all that I did was I just took paper crumbling and I just basically stretched the audio out so that it kind of gave a, I don't want to say distorted, but it gave a mechanical texture to it. I wanted this to resemble the debris from the explosion. It's not a crazy important layer, but it does add a lot to it. 
And then the next sound that I did was the explosion, which is right here. It's actually these three sounds here, four sounds. So that was created with the sound of electricity. So instead of using the same electricity sound up here, which is a little bit weaker, it has a kind of a consistent, steady, calm tear in the paper that I was using to record it. But this one, I decided to take a more aggressive paper tearing sound. And as you'll hear, I used the more aggressive tear for the bigger sound, the explosion. And I think that's, there's a comparison to draw there. And then the explosion itself, the impact, this was actually done with just a grill in my backyard. I just, there's a ton of metal parts on a grill. So all that I did was I just found different parts and I found a low end, a high end, uh, and I just tried to fill out the frequency spectrum a bit. So if you listen to this here, it's a higher sound. And then if you listen here, it's a lower sound and they kind of complete each other in the frequency spectrum. And then to tie it all together, I added some white noise. As you'll hear, it kind of fills out the remaining frequencies in between the higher and the lower sound. And then the electricity tear added a nice layer as well. And if we listen to all of that together, Awesome. And then the last sound and the most important sound in my opinion are these three layers right here. Which is just a second build up really. And all that I did was I used two synthesizers right here. Or let's just listen to one at a time. And what I like about this synthesizer is if we compare it to the intro synthesizer, it's a faster paced synth that kind of has a faster tempo to it and I think that it kind of just builds more excitement for the explosion that's coming which I think does a lot really and then the other thing that I did was I did another high pitch sound here and I think that the idea behind using the higher pitch sounds was that if you listen to the beginning of the sound effect as a whole you'll hear that it's very th there aren't many high pitch frequencies in that sound effect but if you listen to this part of the sound it kind of fills out the frequency spectrum at the end. It kind of, it's like completing the sound over time. And then the last sound that I added to this was probably my favorite sound, which is just me with some silverware. And I just banged, banged silverware against each other and it made this metal impact and then I reversed it. And then I obviously added a lot of echo and reverb on it. And if you listen, And just to show how important the sound is, I'm going to go ahead and mute these three tracks. And we're going to play it. And let's listen with it. As you hear, it's kind of like a, it's an anticipatory sound. It kind of is telling the listener something cool is going to come soon. And it delivers with an explosion. Anyways, that's the entire breakdown for this video. If you're interested in learning about sound design for games, I put out a free course on my website, blipsounds.com. You can check in the description. And I basically just have a free 30 minute course and it just teaches the very bare basics of a DAW, which is what we're working in here. DAW stands for a digital audio workstation. So anyways, if you guys are interested, uh, just go ahead and check out that course. It's really, it's quick and easy, and I, I think you guys can pick up a lot from it if you guys are interested in learning sound design. And if you actually want to watch me recreate this sound in full on the same website, blipsounds.com, you'll see it in the link in the description, you'll be able to watch me recreate this sound in full. I'll, I, have all the, I have all the source recordings down here. As you can see, it's a lot of source recordings, and I just go, I, we don't go through all the source recordings, obviously, but we go through the entire process of creating the sound effect. I go through all the effects that you see over here, and I go through all of the synthesizers, I go through the delays, the echo, the compression, I, I do everything. Uh, but if you guys don't think you're ready for that yet, I really recommend checking out the free course on the website. But anyways, I hope this was helpful for you guys, and I will see you around.